take a look at this super bland 3D scene. We've got three spheres on the top and three cubes on the bottom with a blank background. This is the type of scene that you might make when you first get started with 3JS. I'm going to go to my code editor and uncomment 10 lines of code. Let's refresh the page and see what happens. It's the same scene, but with some textures added in. All it took was about 10 lines of code. Looks a lot better, doesn't it? What's going on guys? My name is Suboptimal, and in this coding tutorial, we'll go over everything you need to know to get started with textures in 3JS. Let's jump right in. Before we dive straight into the code, I want to talk about this technical term known as UV mapping. UV mapping is the method for taking a two-dimensional texture and mapping it onto a three-dimensional geometry. Here's a quick example on discover3js.com. They're mapping this two-dimensional checkerboard texture onto one face of a cube. The 0, 1 coordinate here is going to map to this vertice on the 3D cube. The 0, 0 coordinate on this texture is going to map to this coordinate on the 3D cube. So basically all you're doing is sort of like mapping where this texture is supposed to go on a three-dimensional object. Fortunately, this isn't something we have to worry about because 3JS automatically implemented UV mapping so we can just easily add textures onto all the basic shapes. If you ever Google anything with textures, then you might run into this UV mapping term and I just wanted to give you guys a heads up as to what that was all about. The template code for this video and all future tutorials that I make about 3JS are going to be based on this setup guide. If you're confused as to where I'm getting this code from, just check out the video and you'll be good to go. So this is going to be the basic scene that we start out with. The main difference here between this box and the normal box from the setup guide is that this one is using a mesh standard material. This material accepts textures and so we can add textures to our scene. You're going to want to create a folder called assets and set up a couple of images that we're going to set as textures inside of our 3D scene. Now that we've set up our project and also gotten some texture files from Google, let's see how we can add the space background to this 3D scene. It's only two lines of code. So once you create this new texture loader, all you gotta say is dot load and pass in the place where the JPEG file exists. And once you do that, um, you're gonna get a space texture. Let's just add it to the background of our scene. And remember, test.scene is referring to this 3JS scene that we initialized from our initialization function right over here. And of course, once you save that file, you get a nice background like this. To be honest, the hardest part of this whole thing was setting up this whole scene, right? Adding it was just two lines of code. Let's move on to the next one. The first thing I'm going to do is add the UV texture. This is going to help us visualize how the UV mapping is happening. Let's go to our app.file and here doing a new 3JS text loader and I'm loading the UV PNG file. Now the main difference here is that we're going to need to go to our mesh standard material and pass in the texture. And passing it in is as simple as adding an extra option. The option is called map and it takes in a 3JS texture as you can see here if you hover over it and we're going to pass in the UV texture. So let me go down to the sphere and uncomment this as well. Save that and let's see what we get. Each face on the cube gets its own zero to one mapping. Whereas on the sphere, it's a little different. The zero zero is all the way over here. The zero one is here and the one one sort of maps around like this. So the sphere has a little bit of a different mapping than the cube. As you work with 3JS more and more, you're going to understand how the mappings of different objects work. So a cylinder is going to have a different mapping. A torus is going to have a different mapping. Let's add the other two textures in and see what we get. So adding the other two textures is also pretty straightforward. All we gotta do is create the texture with the texture loader, load in the create and earth files. Once you do that, the texture is basically gonna be inside of these two variables. This box is gonna get the create texture. This other box is gonna get the earth texture. Our other sphere is gonna get the create texture. And the final sphere is gonna get the earth texture. Again, that was like two lines of code. Once we refresh our page, we get our 3D scene. The crate looks really messed up on the sphere because of how the mapping works. So if you're ever sort of like lost as to how this mapping is working, just load up one of these UV mapping textures and put it on the object that you're trying to map something onto. And then you'll get a better understanding of how the mapping is working. So if you didn't have all these references and you just had this sphere with this crate image, it might be hard to understand how the mapping is working.
there's a lot more complex things you can do. So let's take a look at this example on the 3JS website. Let's see what happens if we start rotating it. As you can see, right, the texture can get rotated, can repeat textures. So you can repeat on the X direction, you can repeat on the Y direction, you know, you can do a lot of complex things. Um, you can also change the offset, the X offset, rotate, you know, you can really sort of uh, play around with textures however you want to. Let's do a quick example. So right now I've got a 3JS scene with this space background. What if I wanted to repeat the space background? How can I set that up? In the code, it's actually really straightforward, again, to figure out how to set this up. Here, what we're saying is, how many times do you want to repeat on the X axis? You want to repeat it twice, and we want to repeat it twice on the Y axis. And of course, um, that is exactly what happens here. We are repeating the texture in the background. And of course, we can also do this on our cube or on our sphere. You know, you can do a lot of complex things. This video is just sort of scratching the surface of what you can do. So yeah, that's going to be it for today. Hopefully now you guys have a good understanding of 3JS textures. If you made it this far, then hit the like button because that really does help me and the channel out. And consider subscribing if you want to see more suboptimal content about 3JS and 3D programming. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.